happy Tuesday. What's up? What's up? Um, if you're here, really glad that you're joining me tonight. Um, I'm going to be continuing to work on um, my friend's beer label that I'm helping design for him. Um, and I got this question last time, so I'm going to go ahead and clarify. The beer is called Chocolate for Breakfast because it is a chocolate stout. I'm pretty sure it's a stout. Um, and so that's where the name came from. Um, and you'll see the theme as I'm working on it. It'll start to make a lot more sense. Um, go ahead and... Oh, that's cool. I love it when the air server is frozen. I've been, I had issues with it last time too. Um, I may just need to, oh, there we go. Okay. Now it looks like it's showing up. If it gets finicky, I'm just going to hop over to another view. Cause I also have this overhead view that I can look at. I was just kind of concerned about having a glare. Um, so you know, I want to try to limit this view because, and also it's not as close up. You can't see as much detail. Hopefully the air server decides to cooperate, knock on wood. Um, but anyway, so um, our son is in bed now, which means that um, I can get to work on this. Um, so last I remember, I left off on the lettering. Um, I just realized that this camera is kind of pointed. There we go. I think that's better. Um, anyway, I uh, left off with the lettering, got the chocolate portion blocked in. Um, so now we'll do... Uh, actually, I'm going to do breakfast and I'll do four last because that's not a crucial word. So definitely chocolate and breakfast are like the most important in terms of hierarchy. And I'm not, I'm still not sold on the orange for this, for the lettering, but um, I'm going to try it for now. For some reason, I turned the sketch off. Just as a as a quick reminder, I'm just going to show what the sketch looked like originally. So this is the original sketch that came up with, got the sign off on. Um, so now I'm in the process of coloring it in. Just get all the layers turned back on. Okay, cool. Now we're back in business. I do have some more lettering on the coffee mug too that I'll end up doing. Um, but it's really, really tiny. Really, really tiny. <clears throat> I am gonna make sure that I check the chat more often tonight because last time I missed someone actually joined the chat and I was really excited, except I was like 10 minutes too late on seeing that they were, had joined the chat. Um, so that's always frustrating when you're like, uh, why I wasn't paying attention. So, um, the actual creator of this beer may be joining tonight to watch. Um, we will see if they hop on. So for this, really, wow, my hand feels really like shaky. It was a long day today at work, so sometimes it's like come, trying to come in 
to do something like with that requires precision and fine pulse control is like really difficult. <laughs> like, whoa. Oh, and like, you know, whoops, <laughs> got random orange streak there. It's also weird because I'm used to having, I have a, like a craft light in front of me right here. And I'm used to having it on. This is what it looks like when it's on. And it's fine as long as the, um, hey, hey, Rachel and Sam, what's up, guys? So glad that you're here. Thanks for joining. Um, I was saying that uh, this light I usually have on so you can see my face better, but it creates a glare on the screen. So I'm going to turn that off, but it's weird. It just feels weird to be doing this without that light on. Um, and right now I'm just uh, coloring in the lettering. I'm going with the orange for now and we'll see how it looks once you kind of get everything filled in because I can always adjust the colors after the fact. Um, but the orange just seemed like it provided the best contrast against the brown in the background. Because the idea is that the background's like a chocolate bar. Um, thanks, Rachel. The, uh, the background that is like really abstract it's like an abstracted chocolate bar. So um, I had it like in kind of a shaded format where it was like supposed to look a little bit more literal like a chocolate bar. And I realized like for me personally, when I'm working, looking at beer labels, I like having clean lines um, and having something that would vectorize really easily, which is um, essentially where the image is, uh, vector based and not pixel based. Um, like they're, they're actual like math equations determining the outline of the shape and vector illustrations. And for something like this, I definitely think you would want to be able to vectorize it so you could scale it easily. Um, for instance, you could take this middle panel the chocolate for breakfast part and like crop it and make a poster out of it. Um, so anyway, that's my thought process there and why I ended up going with more of like an abstract background. And I can, I'm going to go in and probably add some more detail to it at the end, but we're not quite at the detail stage yet. I like to block in all the colors first and then go back and like work through the details it's also i think good to do that in that order because you can um kind of bounce around different sections of the illustration and work on details and um it i think is more cohesive when you kind of bounce around like that as opposed to like focusing in really hard on just one specific area. And then you kind of like zoom back out and you're like, whoa, wait a minute. That doesn't match the rest of the composition. I'm speaking from experience because I've definitely had that happen before. So we had something really strange happen in our neighborhood today. Uh, my husband and I both work from home and, um, at around, I'm trying to remember what time it was, maybe like eight or so, 8 AM. Uh, we heard like some squealing tires outside, but we've had like so much construction going on lately that we kind of were just like, oh, whatever. It's just some construction crew. They're like, they have some heavy equipment out. And, you know, that's probably what it is. 
Nope. It was actually um, a guy had run into a ditch um, on in our neighborhood. It was like um, our neighbor's ditch. And he was trying to get out of the ditch, except if you looked at it, like it was plain to see that there was no way this guy was getting out of the ditch. So, you know, a bunch of the, bunch of the neighbors came out and they're like, what is this guy doing? Like, there's no way he's going to get his car out. Um, like it was so weird. In fact, that our, one of our neighbors called the cops to come out cause they were kind of thinking, Oh, this guy must be drunk. Um, yeah, sure enough. The cop showed up, breathalyzed him, and um, ended up arresting him and got a, to a tow truck out to come take away his car. But anyway, we, we live on like a quiet cul-de-sac, so it was really bizarre. Um, like, it, oh, oh, and the cops apparently asked the guy, they're like, hey, have you been drinking? You know, and they show up. And the guy goes, I've only had two beers at 8.30 in the morning. Uh, okay. I mean, it's one thing for you to say like, oh, I've only had a couple beers, but I mean, when it's that early in the morning, what, what are you doing with your life? Um, so anyway, I think it's safe to say that man is very fortunate that the ditch stopped him from going any further today because um, had any of the neighborhood kids been out playing at that time, God forbid, something really bad could have happened. Um, and he's really lucky that he did not hit anyone with his car. So, yeah. Anyway, really weird. And this is like after we've had, it was like two major accidents in the intersection right outside of our neighborhood. Our neighborhood is not a big place, guys. It's literally two streets. There's like maybe 20 homes in our neighborhood. And we've had two, like two major, major accidents uh, where people had to be like airlifted out um, within the span of a couple months. And then this happened. And it's just like, what is going on? Are we like living in a crazy bubble or something? I just, I don't get it. So anyway, that's that's my interesting story for <laughs> for today. Um, thanks, Sam. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm working on the chocolate bar. I haven't shaded it yet, but it does look pretty appetizing, especially all the chocolate crumbles on the side. Um, <laughs> 99 problems in a ditch is 97. <laughs> just people people are crazy I tell you what so I know for sure with this lettering that like on the chocolate part I want to do some shading and make it look like I don't like glossy icing if that makes sense or it's like it's got like a glossy kind of sheen to it. So I'll have to do some shadows and highlights on, on the lettering to give it that effect. For breakfast, I'm not sure yet what kind of detail I'm going to add to that. Um, it, it reminds me of like diner style lettering, you know, like kind of retro. Um, which makes me think that maybe it's just a matter of adding some, some like line work on top of it. Um, I might have to look up some, just get some ideas. I'm gonna look up like old diner menus or diner signs and see what I can find.
Yeah. I'm, hmm. I don't know. I don't know about the orange. I just, I don't know yet. We're probably going to swap around some colors. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I gotta focus on what I'm doing. Finish the letters, Jennifer. Finish walking in the color. So I'm pretty sure that I have like ADHD, um, or maybe not ADHD, but ADD, but it has never been diagnosed. Um, I've heard that it's harder to diagnose in women, but um, I have a really hard time like focusing a lot. It, well, it's weird. I can focus on on stuff like this, um, but I think what keeps me engaged is that there's lots of like little bits and components that I can hop around between. But if you ask me to sit there and work on architectural details all day, I will just go jump off a bridge. Um, I can't do it. And like, even when I'm sitting down to work, I tend to like hop around between a lot of things. Like I usually have several tasks up at once so that I can hop around between them. Um, I find it just keeps my attention better that way. I don't know if anyone else is like that, but um, that's what I find works for me. I try to use my ADD to my advantage. And I think that's like my superpower is just keeping multiple things up at any given time to work on and allowing myself to hop between them and not feel like I have to stay focused on just the one thing the whole time. Like today, for instance, when I was waiting for my work computer to load up and my Revit models to load, um, but just like take a minute and go work on my blog post for my website. We'll write just a sentence here, a sentence there. I definitely was not good at doing like a sentence here, a sentence there type of situation for a long time. I felt like I needed big chunks of time to work. You know, I'm going to rewind, leave it like that. I think that matches the other A a little bit better. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I used to feel like I needed really big chunks of time to get anything done. And then I had a child <laughs> and I was like, well, that's not realistic anymore. Now it's like even five minutes is, is a good enough chunk of time to work with. Um, and say, okay, I can get like there are definitely things I can get done in five minutes. So let's tackle those or like things that anything that can be broken down into five minute segments are good candidates for trying to tackle in those moments. I've definitely gotten better at multitasking too, I think. Kind of, you kind of have to, I guess. Can I add that to my resume and just say, great at multitasking because of child. I got some lo-fi music going in the background. Um, I usually like listening to music um, when I am making art. I really kind of prefer listening to music when I'm making art. Um, 
Well, I like lo-fi. I guess it wouldn't be like my first choice if I were just choosing music to listen to while I do stuff, but um, there tends to be like a decent library of it for royalty-free purposes. So that's what I'm going with. And it's chill. I feel like it has, you know, kind of mass appeal, like a lot of different people would enjoy listening to lo-fi in the background because it's kind of relaxing. But I would be curious to, you know, explore some other options as well. I know that there are probably like services now that offer um, streamers like their libraries to stream if you just subscribe monthly, kind of like a Spotify subscription, but just specifically for royalty free music. But again, it's like um, when I'm streaming, like when I'm listening to music on my own, I want to listen to like the artists and music that I'm already familiar with and that I like. So, you know, it's kind of like, eh. Yeah, mom life, for real, for real, for real. Um, I'm just looking at the spacing on the top of these letters to see if I need to make any adjustments, like noticing the B and the R kind of have a little bit more of a gap between the placemat and the letters. I'm gonna grab these guys and just kind of nudge them up a little bit. That might have been a little too much. I think that works. I mean, there's still like a little bit of a larger gap, but that seems kind of consistent on like the letters that are really narrow at the top. Um, so I guess it doesn't bother me as much. All right, well, let me go ahead and do the four, which is a script lettering. So this will be fun, but I'm gonna make it monoline just because it kind of fits the theme that we already have going. I wouldn't want to do like hand lettering uh, with the, what am I trying to say? Or it's more like calligraphy and you have like the different pen weights. I prefer to just go mono line with this. I think that'll look better. Question is what weight should I use? Maybe start with this one and just see. Yeah, and you miss all the detail if you do that. So let's turn that down. Still looks like it might be a little thick. I'm gonna do, not duplicate, but I'm just gonna do another layer and turn that one off. And try another, another one where the line's a little thinner. Turn it all the way down. Okay, I see where I'm messing up here. So, opinions. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. Um, 
All right, so that's with a thicker, thicker uh, line for the four, and then thinner. Yeah, I think I like the thinner too, because it has more detail. Like you can definitely see more. Like, yeah, I, I think I think that makes sense. I'm with you on that. Okay, cool. Um, so I think ultimately the chocolate drip is actually going to be up above these layers. Like that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete that thicker four. But yeah, so ultimately the chocolate drips could be in front of the letters. So went ahead and move that to the right position. I'm going to also go ahead and um, do the coffee mug lettering. But let me set up my group here. That one, actually, I want to put down in here and bring it to the top. Sweet. Okay. Now, what color should I use for the mug? For right, I guess for right now, it really doesn't matter all that much. Um, maybe we can go with like this dark green because if you look at the shading on the mug, um, it's kind of greenish. So that might match pretty well. I am gonna have to switch over now to my studio pen because I can get really small with it. And this is meant to be really small, like where you wouldn't even, I don't, what am I trying to say? Like, it's just a small little detail um, so it doesn't need to be perfect. I say this as a reminder to myself because I tend to be a perfectionist when it comes to these kind of things. I know it sounds really weird, but do it for me, please. I'm not getting the curved effect that I want. Mm. Then again, are you going to notice it that I'm zoomed out like that? I don't know. I do think though that that is too thin. I think I can actually go a little bit thicker on the line weight and help it show up a little bit better. O in my sketch is wonky, so it's really kind of visually throwing me off. Okay. I'm going to try to give the illusion that this text is curving around the coffee mug. And then the C got gigantic. So we um, just, so not distort, not distort. What uniform. I'm 
can see how it kind of like pixelated it. Can go back over it. Hopefully that cleans it up. Okay. I'm using a matte, um, like a mattifying screen protector on my iPad. It gives it a paper-like feel when I draw on it. Um, so that's really nice, but sometimes my fingers don't get the grip that they need to like zoom in and out, so I struggle. Really put that in there. Ooh. Yeah. Mm -mm, I feel like that needs a little finessing. So let me how we do that. Um, now I kind of know where I need to squish some things a little bit more. not make the H way over there. Kind of squish it a little bit more. Yeah. Does anyone have any fun July 4th plans? We just realized today that this upcoming weekend is July 4th weekend. And Trevor and I are like, wait, we don't have any plans right now. How is that possible? I think we may try to go out on the boat because his brother's going to be in town with his girlfriend. Um... So we'll probably do like a family boat trip, but also probably try to get out at least one other time over the weekend. Especially if the weather's nice, you know, why not? Shift this A a little bit. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I would definitely not mind a mug that says this. I would definitely use it for sure. That's one thing I have not tried to make yet is a mug. Like I ma I've made a lot of things, but a mug is not one of them actually. So I might have to give that a try at some point. You can see all the little marks I made over there. Okay. All right, you know what, the perfectionist, perfectionist in me wants to keep tweaking that, but I think I'm gonna leave it as is and say that is fine because when you're looking at it at its actual size, which is probably like that, well, for, um, yes, let's definitely hang. Like I said, we're free. So you guys let me, let us know. Um, let me go to, yeah, so that's like at the actual size, right? My hand for scale. Um, and even then I think that might be a little too big. So you're not really gonna see that little, the little text on the mug, like you will see it, but 
whether it's perfectly aligned. Mm, I feel like probably not. So I'll leave it like that. I guess in the poster, if you blow it up and make it a poster, I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it right now. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Um, we'll definitely, definitely get some planes going. Um, mm, oh, yeah. Almost forgot. We have some little, um, like, steam thing. I don't know what to call it, like, lines indicating steam. But I don't know, I don't know if I really want to show that. Or if I show it, I at least don't want it to intersect with the chocolate bar pattern in the background. Trying to make, make them a little less curvy. Hoping that maybe they're more so, I don't know. Uh, what do we do? I think the reason I had them in the sketch was because I felt like that space needed something there. Um, so I'll leave it for now, but maybe there's something else, um, something else we can put there that makes more sense. To think about like coffee related things, I don't know. It, it may come together as I color this in. Maybe it's more subtle and it you just don't even notice it. Um, all right, what to work on first? Maybe the, I guess the lettering probably, right? Like in terms of detailing, because that's pretty important and so is the chocolate on the plate. Um, oh, that's tough. Okay, you know what? We're going to do the chocolate because it looks really good. Like, I want to eat it good. Okay, chocolate. No, no, it's not what I wanted to do. Okay. Uh, I'm going to turn this layer to a, well, no, no, no. I take that back. I'm going to make it a clipping mask, which means that anything I draw on this layer will be confined to the chocolate bars, which is really convenient um, when you're doing something like this. Uh, yeah, I think I will leave it on the studio pen because I'm going to need to draw some pretty small details. All right, where to start? I think I'm going to start with one sitting on top. I'm wondering if that shade of brown is maybe a little too dark. I might need to adjust that. You know, it seems like I'm obsessing over like a pixel, but when you zoom out, it does kind of really change the shape. All right, let's see, maybe. Just bring it down a touch. Yeah, I think that maybe looks a little bit better. Um, the only thing is I noticed I didn't quite fill this in the way that I wanted it to. Okay, there we go.
So Trevor and I have both been sick like the last few days now. We got like a cold or cough or something. And I can't tell whether we got it from hanging out with people last Friday or if it was something we got from Levi because Levi's also had like the sniffles, but he seems to always have the sniffles. Who knows? Unfortunately, it's not as bad as like some of the other coughs and colds that we've had, especially COVID. Well, Trevor got off really easy with COVID, but I was pretty miserable. And that was after I got the booster too. That's, that was like after shot number three and I was still like, bleh, dying. I will add shooting back there actually. Well, I don't know. If, it does need something to say, like, hey, there's another piece back here. intersects and there wouldn't be line work because like right now we have this sketch overlay um, but when the sketch layer goes away you don't have that there as like a visual guideline We gotta add a little something to kind of like differentiate between the chocolate bars. And then once I go in and add like the detail on the individual bars, that should all kind of come together.
Just check and make sure I don't have any other spots where I need to like differentiate between one chocolate bar and another. I think we're good. Now it's just adding in that line work on top. assist here and like if I hold my pen down while I'm drawing a line it'll like correct it and make it straight um but I don't want to do that for all of them because I kind of like having that hand-drawn character to the line where it's like not quite perfect That's coming together. That is looking pretty cool. Ten minutes is a long time to be awake, buddy. Here's a part where I gotta remind myself to um, like follow the rules of shading that I set for myself up here. Imagine where the sun, the light source is coming from. I'll use that as a guideline. Time is it? Nine fifteen. Okay, I got a little bit of time left before I gotta call tonight. Maybe about like fifteen twenty minutes, and then I gotta go. And I will pick back up on this, and hopefully finish it out in the next session, because now it's like a lot of detailing, and it doesn't require as much like. Uh, I don't know, when I'm color blocking, you're trying to get the form right, so I tend to like kind of go over things a little bit more. With detailing, I think it in some ways it's a little easier. <laughs> yeah, um, you'd hope you'd... um see some chocolate served for breakfast on a luxury nuclear hotel. <gasps> well, that was pretty crazy. I don't know what they were thinking. Like why, why that would even be a thing. All right, so we got the chocolate shaded. Um, Let's do, I guess next will be the lettering. So we'll start with chocolate. Clipping mask. Doing a group within a group. So chocolate. And let's see. You just need like a slightly darker shade, but not too close to 
Like that's a little too close to the background color. I'm just doing a color test here. That could work. We'll go with that. I ran out of color. Oh no. I was gonna say I ran out of colors on here because I was like grabbing a bunch of different ones. I'm gonna remove this gray one. Oh, there's two empty. Wait, is that a color? Okay. All right, so I did something like this, right? Yeah. Yes. All right, save that one there. Because I'm going to need to use that probably quite a bit. All right, so light source is coming from like this direction. I know you can't see on here. Make my table shake. So light source is coming from this direction-ish on the chocolate. So with that being said, um, just trying to give me some idea of how to shade this. I do think I need to turn up my pen size here. Maybe a little too much. I'm going to start thin with the shading and just kind of see how it looks before I get too crazy. So you can always, you know, increase the shading, you know, the thickness of the shading, but um, it's a little harder to turn it down. One other thing I need to do probably is turn off the sketch layer because it's not really doing anything for us now other than hindering us from seeing what the final product's gonna look like. Because the line work can make you see details that aren't really gonna show up. And you know, if something needs that line work there, needs that detailing, need to see it now in this phase get that addressed. Looking at this, I definitely think I can add some more shading here. I'll bet stand up a little bit more. And then, but then again, it takes away from the bright orange, which adds a nice contrast against the brown in the background. So maybe I won't do that. I'll keep it subtle for now. Um, let me turn that off real quick. So I can see what I'm doing on this 
each. I also gotta remember with the highlights, I think it'll start to come together and you'll start to get more of that like drippy three-dimensional effect. But it is almost like too subtle. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> Let me go ahead and just try adding some highlights. Just see if we can kind of get it going here on the. do exactly that type of like where it's just like a line kind of thinking it might be more like Yeah, some something like that. Um, do you still think that shading needs to be more drastic in order to get this to pop. It just like feels that way. But then it looks like it looks weird when I start putting more shading on there because it's um, it takes away from that orange color. Hmm. I think I'm gonna need to think, I'm gonna need to think on that, how I'm gonna do the drippy, 
kind of liquid effect with that lettering. And then I also need to look at the breakfast part and look at some um, inspiration images. So let's see if I go to Pinterest. My future sister-in-law is doing a Christmas in July um, gender reveal party coming up soon. And um, so I'm sure you can see I was looking for Christmas decoration stuff for that. Even though, you know, I know it's close to July. That's that's why. Um, all right, so I was looking for a retro diner sign. Let's see what I can come up with here. Okay, so like the the one that says the American diner. Like I was thinking of something like that where there's line work inside of the form of the letters. Um, you know, do, do something like that with breakfast to give it that kind of vintage diner vibe. Could also do like the milkshakes thing here where it's like you have layers on layers so like you have the main type but then a couple of different colors kind of outlining it um would be another option to take a look at I also really like this image that has a lot of really cool ideas as well very um, vintage, like motel. That's kind of similar to the whole milkshakes thing I was talking about just before, except instead of having like a solid kind of background color behind it, it's just each individual letter has a different color border. And then the word diner has line work inside of the letter. Same with bowl, kind of a common theme there. See if there's any other, anything else that really pops out to me. Oh yeah, yeah, see like this Mel's Diner sign. The diner text reminds me a lot of, um, reminds me a lot of the, what, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. The diner typeface on this sign reminds me a lot of the breakfast text that um, that I've designed. It's got like a really similar vibe and shape to the letters, um, a little different. Like this is a lot more exaggerated, but um, that's that's what I was thinking of. So that's pretty cool. Um, Vintage Diner and Milkshakes vibe is right on. Sweet. Perfect. I'm glad that, I'm glad we're on the same page then. All right, I think that, I think that gives me some pretty good ideas. So I won't get through doing it for all the letters just yet, but just to kind of give myself a reminder of what I was doing and what my thoughts were on this. Go ahead and start sketching out some of those ideas. This is going to be tricky. Look. 
kind of feel like, well, I wish they would connect, but I guess that's not really possible, is it? With the angle of this, for the line to connect like right in the middle. Not if you're trying to follow the midline of the shape. That was weird. I heard the like busy sound. I guess it was coming from Spotify. I was like, what? This, am I getting a busy signal on Twitch? What is going on here? going with something like this I need to go through and clean up the edges of the lettering because right now it's very rounded and I think with this type of text um, I'm going for that vintage vibe I need the edges a little bit sharper So I could just do like one line going through like that and then maybe um, put that underneath. And do, um, let's do like another color that would I mean blue provides a nice contrast I'm not sure exactly what blue um, I have to look at this a little bit more but could do change the model line do like a border precise sometimes like precise in the way that you want to be I always think it's easier I don't know for me it's easier to be super precise with a real brush like with my real watercolor brush than this um because you're kind of like at the will of the pen pressure sensitivity sometimes whatever pixels it happens to decide you wanted colored in doesn't always pick the pixels that I actually really wanted it to will pick pixels like fairly close to what I intended but not quite do something like that you can even like fill it in um, 
Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Undo group. Um, yeah, so then in this one, I would fill this in, but also like make all of this one piece. Something like that. That's like the milkshake vibe. Or just outline and fill. Like that. That's a little more subtle. Like I said, I'm not necessarily sold on this blue. I just was looking for something to contrast with the orange. And blue is a complementary color to orange. Um... But I'm still not convinced that orange is the right color for the text anyway, so that will all probably change. Just trying to give myself some ideas for things to do to make that text more interesting, breathe some life into it. Um, another thought is turn those off. Let me duplicate that one again. And then I could do, you know, multiple lines. Whoops. Let me go back to my other pen. You know, do like multiple parallel lines. We saw that. Saw that quite a bit in the reference images as well. Like, you know, just the, that's really rough, but something like that, um, where it's like a bunch of lines. The thing is, if it were to do something like that, I might use a darker color. Or maybe like the middle line would be dark. No, I just want the little line to be dark. Yes, yeah, so de as you can tell, detailing a piece is a lot of fun, but it's also, it can also be a little mind boggling. It's like, what? So many different ways you can go with it. No, I don't want both of those colored in. Oh, I see, because they're both connected right there. Well, that's what's going on. Nope. Okay. You know what? I, I give up on that. I'm not sold necessarily on that scheme anyway. I'm kind of digging going with something more like this, where you have like a single line going through all the letters and then the background color and just like really clean it up, tighten it up. And do like the kind of swishy chocolatey, well, not chocolatey, but like liquid texture on the chocolate part. Although I also wonder if that would be a little too matchy matchy with the dripping chocolate on the borders. And maybe, cho maybe the word chocolate needs to be 
um, its own thing so that I can work in some of the colors in the breakfast, like however that goes. Um, yeah, so maybe I need to like focus on breakfast first because I feel like that is maybe a little bit more straightforward and clear. Um, Let's see, I like the ideas for the milkshake vibe. Also ensure the teal color, yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, Sam says he likes the shading around more than multiple lines, but likes the middle line. Yeah, I agree with that too. Um, yeah, I think shading around with the middle line is the way to go. Um, question is, colors, obviously. Um, but also now I need to maybe not necessarily worry about colors yet because we can change those. Um, and kind of see what works, especially if the lettering changes anyway, changes to different color. See, now I'm like playing with the color because I'm like, yeah, but kind of take a look at it and see what does it look like? What if we did this? Also go with something pretty dark to contrast. I might make the orange pop more. Yeah, it actually that actually makes it harder to read, I think. out my color picker tool that I use a lot and play around with some of the colors and see see what we can come up with. Um, I think for now I'm gonna change it to that blue because that you know fits the color palette at least. All right, I gotta go to bed. So I'm gonna come back to this uh, on, hopefully on Thursday. Um, I do have a couple other things on my schedule for streaming though. So um, I gotta double check, but um, I may keep working on this on Thursday or I may need to push it back to next week and keep working on it next week. Um, we'll see, but in any case, uh, I like where this is headed. I think it's turning out really cool. Um, can't wait to see kind of how this, all of this plays out once all the details get added. I think it's going to be really cool. Um, and, uh, thanks so much for joining me tonight, guys. Uh, it was cool hanging out with you. And um, we'll hopefully see you soon. Bye, guys. Have a good night.